We want to demonstrate how Graphics Toolbox is not only a great tool for creating more attractive and powerful presentations, but it's also a great way to teach students new material and reinforce difficult concepts with a visual, hands-on approach. We have developed this series for you, the teacher or homeschool parent, to inform and inspire you. We intend to be continuing to expand the subjects taught in this series, and we are open to suggestions. Contact us if you have any particular needs or interests that you would like to see covered in a future video. I want to start by mentioning the Graphics Toolbox is a professional level graphic program with a lot of functions and an infinite number of applications. You don't need to learn all of the functions to use the program effectively. Start by learning the tools that you need to accomplish your goals and build on that as desired. No pressure. Take it a step at a time. This video is designed to show you how to draw triangles. As we approach the lesson on drawing triangles, we are considering the two ways these geometric shapes are named, by their sides and by their angles. We will show you how to draw triangles with both objectives. We will use a total of four functions to create and save this triangle project, but we will only need the line tool to draw the triangles, so they are easy to execute. We will be using the Daily Life color palettes to choose fun colors for our colorful shapes the pen width to adjust the thickness of the lines, the feedback area to guide us while we draw accurate lines and angles, and when we are finished we will frame and save the finished triangle project for future use. Let's get started. Let me just quickly introduce you to the graphics toolbox interface. This is the drawing area. Notice that it's large. I have my drawing area set at 25 inches wide and 20 inches high. When I print or save, I'm not printing or saving my whole drawing area, only the part that I frame. Because I ultimately want to print out this project, I want to give myself a boundary to work within that's the size of my paper. For this I use a page guide, so I'm left clicking the page guide button. Notice the small buttons in the feedback area. These are called subcommands. Every function has different subcommands and the feedback that appears in the section when the button is selected and activated. I'm choosing the Read in a Page Guide subcommand. In the All Page Guides column, I'm choosing Letter for the Orientation Landscape and Select. Now I have a letter sized red frame attached to my cursor. I'm dragging it to the center of the drawing area and left clicking to place there. Now we'll draw some triangles, but I want to zoom in one level, so I'm pointing at the page guide and I'm pulling the roller ball on my mouse toward me. Now I'm able to see my lines a bit clearer. Let's start with triangles that are named by their sides. First we'll draw an isosceles triangle. Since an isosceles triangle has two equal sides, I will carefully watch the feedback area as I draw the lines, so that I draw two of the lines the same length. I'm left clicking the line button and increasing the pen width to 25. I want my first triangle to be blue, so I'm clicking on a blue color to make it the current color. I'm left clicking in the drawing area where I want the first corner to be. I can drag that line in any direction, but watch the measurements in the feedback area. In the inches column, the diagram shows the height of the line, the width of the line, and the length of the line along that angled line. I'm dragging the line until the angled line shows the length to be about two inches. Then I left click and I've completed that line. Notice that the function doesn't end. I can draw a second connected line immediately. Since we are drawing an isosceles triangle, I want my next line to also be two inches long. So I can drag it in any direction, but ultimately I want to drag it until it's two inches, which it is now. I'm going to left click and I've created the second side. Since the length of the third line doesn't matter, I just need to connect the lines. If I want to know the dimension, I can watch the feedback area before I make the last click and make a note of that length. In this case, it's about 1.13 inches. After making the third click, I click the exit button to end the function. Now let's draw a scalene triangle. Since a scalene triangle has no equal sides, this is even easier than the isosceles. 
In this case, we are only going to watch the feedback area to make sure that we don't draw any of the sides the same length. I'm going to follow the same steps as before, but let's use a different color. We could stay within this color palette, or we could click on any of the tabs at the top and go to a different color story. We'll go to the girls palette, and I'm going to choose TNT Turk. I've clicked my line tool already. I'm going to click in the drawing area, drag my line, and watch the line length, which is 3.62. Click. I'll drag it again. I've got 1.82. That's different. I'll drag it again, which is 2.29. So I have three different length sides. So I've just completed a scalene triangle. Now for an equilateral triangle. Since an equilateral triangle's three sides are equal length, we need to watch the angle of the lines as we draw them to make sure they are all 60 degrees. The three angles of the triangle need to total 180 degrees. I'll choose my line tool. I'll choose a new color. Now as I draw the first line, I'm watching the length. I'll make it about four inches. Now as I drag the second line, not only do I want it to be four inches, but I also want that angle in the third column to be 60 degrees. So I'm moving it in to watch the angle line at 60 degrees and also the length to be about four inches. I'm actually going to overlap my scaling triangle, but I click. Now I'm dragging it down, and if I've done this properly, I'll be able to connect it and see that it's 4 inches and 60 degrees. So I've just created an equilateral triangle. Now you have just learned how to watch the feedback area to draw accurate angles, so it'll be easy to draw acute, right, and obtuse triangles, the triangles that are named by their angles. You can see how accurate we can draw the various triangles and how fun they look in a variety of colors. You could create an entire page of triangles of different colors and different types of triangles by their sides and by their angles, and then frame them and save them for future use. To do that, we'll want to save our page guide. And the fastest way to do that is to click on Page Guide and the second subcommand which frames the current page guide. That function immediately puts a yellow frame on top of the red page guide frame line. Then I'm going to click the Save button, and I get a Save Preview window that appears confirming that I've framed the correct image. I click Go Ahead with Save, and the Save browser opens. I've created a Math Projects folder, and I'm going to name this file Triangles All Types. I may have other triangle projects later, so for them to appear in alphabetical order, I like to put the subject name first. I'm making sure that the save as type, that the file format is PCX, and then I click save to save the file. I hope that this lesson has clearly taught you to draw triangles for you to use in your lessons, as well as to prepare you to teach the students to draw their own triangles. Now let loose and fill your page with triangles of various colors, sizes, and classifications. You'll become more comfortable drawing them and create an exciting colorful page of triangles in the process. Just think how much fun your students will have creating a page like this. And as they draw their lines and watch their line length and angle feedback, the mystery of geometry will fade away and you will color their learning for math. For more information about Graphics Toolbox and additional learning videos, please visit our website at www.greatsoftwaretools.com.